Pony Island had a little um, cart and they were impoverished and he could hear the, the music coming from Coney Island. He could hear, um, you know, he, but he couldn't get in. He, he could just kind of, I have to picture him like standing at the fence, not being able to get into the concert and or afford to be able to go. So fast forward, he drops out of school to help his family. He goes into the garment industry. He becomes a rag to, rags to riches story. Um, and his, but his philanthropy was always that no child would ever feel the way he felt because mm. of lack of access to performing arts. So then he and his wife um, were approached, they had a, um, a vacation home in Westport, Connecticut. They were approached to build, or to come on as a naming sponsor of this new venue that was being built um, on a unused landfill. And they said, of course, but all concerts have to be free. So that's what brought his, you know, this dream into reality. And so now we are the, that was the first Levitt Pavilion. And now we are the, I think, eighth. And there will be 12 in total mm. um, by the end of all of them being built. But then they also have the Levitt National Foundation, Mortimer Mimi Levitt National Foundation, has this AMP series too. So a lot of smaller cities have, um, have small AMP series, Levitt AMP series. So they're really in almost 30 different cities or um, communities around the country. Um, so we are a signature Levitt venue. Mm. Um, so we are an actual, you know, building that is downtown Dayton and we offer 50 free concerts every summer. That is a lot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it is quite an undertaking to put on a show or a festival. You're, you're basically doing that you know, several days a week once once the concert schedule begins. You, you run pretty much as, as the weather gets warmer, right, and as it would be appropriate to have concerts outside, and you run all the way up until the fall as the weather starts to change and it gets too cold, exactly. that is just a fantastic undertaking. Yes, yes, and that's why we need lots of volunteer help. <laughs> oh, oh, oh <laughs> yes. I know. I, I, well, I shouldn't say that. I, I have an inkling. You probably know, but I, I think about all the different Gosh, all the logistics, just the yeah. support, the small tasks that need to be done with every show. There and is a lot that goes on yeah. behind the scenes. There is, you know, not only just, you know, booking the bands, but then you have, we have a, we bring in a crew, we hire a crew from IOTC 66 Union, and um, they do our lighting and our sound and, you know, um, our, the monitors, when you need, we need four people every night doing all of that. Then we have, you know, it's a, we're nonprofits, so we have to raise money to be able to do this so that people don't have to pay their ticket price, or a normal ticket price. Then, um, we have, you know, I do all the marketing and PR, and then we have someone who does all of the operations, all the volunteer management. I mean, ev there is so much that goes on behind the scenes. So, so people who go and enjoy the music, and please do. Yes. I've been to almost every show. I, I missed a couple of darn family obligations. <laughs> but no, no, in all seriousness, if you have the opportunity to go, it's a great great space the lawn is beautiful you're outside on a lovely excuse me lovely evening enjoying some terrific music and how does that come about how do you guys decide who to book because one of the great things i'm going to trumpet here <laughs> is that you cut across genre and style Yes, so we try to be very intentional about programming across many different genres and then making sure that the people on our stage are representative um, in mm -hmm. terms of di diversity, equity, inclusion of the people of our city. Because right. we have in such an amazing, yeah. di amazingly diverse community. And so um, we sit down with multiple different genres. I think, you know, we started in 2018 and tried to program across, or Lisa did it that, that year, tried to program us across like, you know, 10 different genres. And then we saw people loved, um, people loved R&B, mm -hmm. people of Dayton loved blues, People of Dayton loved funk. So we then added some more bands of that. You know, I think we had one funk band in 2018, and now I, I don't even know how many we have now. We have a lot of different <laughs> funk bands. Um, I, I remember thinking it was three or four, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. probably what it is. It's probably three or four, which is, you know, across this year we have 41 concerts, not the normal 50. It's a rebuilding year after of 2020. But, um, but yeah, so that is kind of how we started start the process of booking but then you know we have local we have regional we have national i don't think we have international this year because of the pandemic but we usually do have some international artists as well um and so that's working with agents to get the you know the international artists or the national artists 
um, going to conference booking conferences to listen to people mm. and then work with those agents at those conferences. But then you know, then there's local who they a local band might not have an agent, so it's finding out who those bands are, reaching out to them specifically, you know, and and really trying to be representative of our community. And, and I think that's not just a good goal; that's a laudable goal. Oh, thank you. You know, to be that representative is something that takes a fair amount of planning, right? You have to think and reflect deeply on, well, what, what is Dayton in 2021? Might be very different than, say, Dayton was even a few years ago. So to be that thoughtful about the process, I think is really, really important. And I've, I've been to several different shows, and it's just wonderful to see not only diverse music being played, but diverse audiences. You get people of all age groups, you get people from all walks of life, you get just wonderful representation of the strength and the health of our community, just kind of sitting in their lawn chairs out on the lawn. It, it, it's really heartwarming. I mean, people are rolling their eyes at me. You stop it. <laughs> you stop rolling your eyes. I, I think that we could use more events like this. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you a story that happened only a couple week weekends ago that uh, really made me realize what we're doing. We say so. Our mission is building community through music, one mm -hmm. free concert at a time. But this just illustrates what you just said. So um, the start of the concert. What concert was it? I can't even remember exactly what concert it was. Might have been um, Vanessa Collier or mm -hmm. Scotty Bratcher Band. One of those. Or maybe anyway, it doesn't matter. There were about four little girls playing on the dance floor, dancing, playing little games together. I mean, they were kind of paying attention to the music, but it was the, it was their party. And there were about four of them. <laughs> then you can go look on our Facebook. By the end of the night, there were about 10 girls, maybe more, and they were they had, they didn't know each other at the beginning of the concert, but by the end of the concert, they were best friends. They were running around the lawn barefoot, just singing and dancing and playing together. And then after the concert, I got to talk to one of the girls, and I was like, "Did you make a lot of new friends tonight?" She goes, "Oh yeah, yes, I <laughs> did." And then she said, "I didn't." She's like, "And now I'm a fan of this band. I've never been a fan before, but I'm a fan now." Oh, <laughs> oh that's just, lovely. It was so fun that like she got to know a new band she got to make new friends you know and and think about a you know a concert venue where tickets are ninety dollars a, a, a ticket a, a family can't afford to mm -hmm. most families can't afford to take their entire family right. let alone you know every weekend you know there's something to do and what a great early concert experience to have yes right the the, the when you think of concerts or live music you think of an experience like that maybe you made a friend who's going to be, you know, in, in a major life event in your future, right? right. Um, that, that, to me, is so beautiful and speaks to the power of music. You're absolutely right, Madeline. If you're just joining us, you're listening to your Tuesday afternoon alternative, welcome. And definitely, please, we want you to definitely appreciate the music wherever you call home from wherever you're listening. But right now we're talking about a music event that happens in our fair city of Dayton, Ohio. Madeline Hart is very kind to come in. She works with Levitt Pavilion and is part of the important team there that puts together a concert series that is fantastic, that is really, really broad-based community music experience that speaks to the point that, that she just raised. So those of you listening, thank you for spending some time with us. Let's listen to some local music right now. Maybe you will see them in a future Levitt. I don't know, I can't say that. <laughs> but definitely, let's, let's take a break here and come back and talk to Madeline a little bit more. Oh, you're a good interview. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I shouldn't be mean, so I'll, I'll be very vague about it. But uh, we, we, there was one time I had a national band who, who, who was playing, um, not in town, but nearby. All their words were one-word answers. Oh, that was awkward. Gosh. That was awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I felt, I felt I, after a while, I kind of felt bad for them because clearly they were exhausted. Right. Right? So yeah. it was a point where, where, you know, so maybe we cut it a little short. <laughs> I'm elaborating on the way the song sounds to me, which nobody wants to hear. <laughs> I, uh, my dad was a um, 
director producer at Kentucky Educational Television. At the oh, PBS yeah, 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 okay. So, but so he was went to school for radio and television. So he did radio mostly in college. Oh, so he could um, do this far better than I. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He he was he was uh, at KET during the switch between from analog to digital. Oh, so he that, saw well, all well, of that. Well, still, though, his experience would have been valuable. Right. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. So, um, but I I was on. Um, 107.7, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. When I yeah. first started this job, and I texted him, I'm going to be on the radio. You know? so <laughs> no, it's, a, it's fun to do and that, yeah. And he listened, and I said, so what'd you think? He was like, it was it was myself and Lisa and um, one of our board members. And yeah, he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You all sound Midwestern. <laughs> <laughs> like, can't. I don't have a radio voice, you're right. <laughs> so he, he can't be the supportive dad in that moment, right? Like, you, you, yeah. did, you did lovely, or you, you did, did great. Right. Or, you're very no, no, no. Midwestern. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was very supportive. He was very supportive. Oh, yeah, yeah. and I don't mean to be unkind yeah. here. Yeah, no, he's very kind. Um, but, 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 but yeah, so <laughs> there are times like that. when, you know, that, that training kicks in. Yeah. No, no, no. I, not, <laughs> I do speak with a vocal fry. I know this. <laughs> my well, voice some of, the, my some voice of that's teachers. controversial in my humble opinion. Oh, but, 100%. I was Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. about it. Uh, my, uh, are, we, but, uh, are we trying to shut down some people who are trying to create a voice for themselves? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm, I'm fairly critical. It's like... There, there is, there is serious vocal dysphonia. Right. And then there's, and then there's just the t- that someone the texture, someone's voice. Right. We shouldn't judge people on that basis. Right. Right. Um, and it tends and to be I've, very I've, racist I've listened, and sexist. Yes, I was going to say I've, I've listened to a lot of podcasts about um, women in. Oh, yep, yep, yep. In podcasting, yeah, radio, and yeah. how so many things that men can get away with in their voices. Oh men. yeah. It's oh yeah. So nitpicked. Well, I mean, I, I have a little bit in my voice, mm. and I'm, I'm, I'm well aware of it. No one's ever told me I have vocal fry. And I'm like, right. Wait, but I know for a fact that <laughs> I, I do. I know I do. <laughs> right? I actually have to take steps to modulate right. and to control certain things. Yeah. And then I get excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, I think, yeah, that, that, whole, that whole argument is really fallacious mm-hmm. because it shuts down people who are trying to articulate an argument and how they sound is less important than the right. content of what they're trying to communicate. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but but yeah, here I am wearing my sociology hat. <laughs> I have sorry, I do that. I'm so sorry. I have there are lots of things that I immediately go to critical mode and like, well, no, people are doing that because they're trying to argue for turf. Right. Um, I was making sure we weren't on. I saw a countdown. Go oh on. yeah yeah yeah. We'll we'll come in after Winchester Gray. Oh um, okay great. But I also, I should let you take a drink of water. And oh, yeah, not, I not should. Totally I totally monopolize forget. your time here. But oh, no, it, it's so lovely. Uh, gosh, even when I'm not working, <laughs> it's not really work. It doesn't feel like work. <laughs> All the other volunteers are fun to talk to, and the whole experience is great. Um, and I, I chose some bands. I probably need to sign up for a whole bunch more, too. Um, some family things had to get <laughs> sorted. Um, but, but uh, as is often the case, right. but uh, I purposely volunteered some shows that, that, okay, I know this band is really good, but I don't know that I would come down and listen otherwise, so I'm going to make myself right. come down and listen. Oh, cool, cool. And even while volunteering, it's like, like the, um, like Scotty Bratcher, like, I knew they were good. Yes. I didn't know how good. <laughs> you didn't know how good Scotty Bratcher or, or, I didn't know how good Scotty Bratcher was. Uh, the one jazz group, um... Uh, Loud Tizer? Yeah, I want to say, I want to say like yes first, to that. first, second weekend. It was early on. Mm-hmm. It was early on. I think that's only, um, the only jazz we've had so far. That we might, had jazz this weekend. Yeah, jazz, yeah, yeah, this weekend, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, so I have fun. to go see my super cool mom-in-law. Um, <laughs> she's lovely, so, yeah. so I enjoy so, it. Okay. Um, that's always the thing with my wife and I. You know, whenever we think about going to do something on time, what are the music events we're going to miss? Right. <laughs> it's, it really is a rich environment yeah. for art. Mm-hmm. Here. It really is. I did. I had no idea. You know, when I first moved up here, I was living with my sister in Westchester. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I was looking for jobs. and primarily looking in Cincinnati. I wanted to live in Cincinnati. That's where I wanted to live. <laughs> and then I ended up getting, not this job, but, but before I worked here, I was working at the Connor Group, and I get, got the job there, and I moved to Miamisburg, and I still was like, okay, date, you know, living in Miamisburg. And then I met my husband, and we were, you know, dating, and sure, sure, we of course. would go places downtown. And I was like, wait, Dayton is really cool. I really <laughs> like Dayton. Like it reminds me of like like the Portland of the Midwest. Oh, you know? I can no, I can totally see that. Um, 
Uh, Andrew, who was just here, was one of the first, among the first, uh, there have been a handful of DJs who promoted strongly um, local music, calling his show <laughs> forthrightly the local show. <laughs> but um, he was in Austin not too long ago, and someone pretty well-regarded musician in Austin who said that Dayton is sort of like what Austin used to be. Yes. And, and so... Yeah, who else? I was just talking to someone about People that. have said that to me. Um, yeah. And I think Austin is a lovely city. I've enjoyed it every time I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've only been a couple times, and it was for work when I worked at the Connor Groups. I didn't get to, like, hang out and explore Austin too much, because I was flew in, worked, flew out. But, sure, sure. Um... But everything I saw of it, I like the second time I was there, I was like, I'm at least gonna go somewhere, and I went and got a crepe from a crepe. Place oh, yeah, I, the like, food is great oh, too. So oh, good. oh yeah, yeah. And and rather, you know, you, you think it's all gonna be barbecue, but there's like so many. So much. Stuff. I mean, my goal was just to eat weird stuff. <laughs> I'm such a foodie. I, I was love like, it. I have, I, I have that. to eat weird things because I'm in the weirdest city. Well, I mean, and, and Austin, in some ways. Prizes its uniqueness, oh, right? Yeah, I mean, keep what's Boston the, what's weird the, yeah, and all that. Yeah, Boston weird, yeah. I mean, and, and I was there. I the two times I, three times, I, it's it's been for work, right? Mm -hmm. So clearly, and one of the work things was a pop music mini conference, and and as part of the conference, we all went to see Leon Redbone. Okay. And which 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 was awesome, and then and then um oh we all like that so much. Everyone's here for another night. What if the conference buys us all tickets to go see Leon Russell? I'm like, sure. <laughs> who, who among the group is going to say no to that, right? We so, so so we saw some really cool jazz, and then we saw some really cool. Oh my God, how do you how do you label Leon Russell, right? It, you want to call it Southern Gothic Southern, you know, uh, blues rock, you know. Uh, but both very different shows, mm -hmm. but really amazing shows. And we made a point to eat at weird places yeah. each night. Like, I could live here. Yeah. I could totally live here. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, went, I went with some people who were not very adventurous in their food. They were not foodies like me. Oh, okay. And okay. so they You were and your like, husband are both foodies? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, cool. And so, uh, but the people I went with were not. So we, I was like, well, we have to go somewhere where I can at least get something. <laughs> we won't go to the place that only serves duck. Fine. <laughs> I'll listen to you for that. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, gosh, I mean, we're, there's so much great food in Dayton. Mm -hmm. I mean, for, for oh city and size, gosh, I mean, so we go to Lily's food. Bistro a lot. Mm -hmm. um, there's always something cool that I've never seen before, and I'm like, I want to have that. Yes. Um, but, but, I mean, quite, to be quite honest, I mean, anything you want, you can pretty much get in Dayton. Yep. Rarely do I not find something. We just found, um, and I'm sure everybody knows about it, but Taqueria La Lomita. Oh, yeah, yeah, The yeah. little food truck uh -huh, that's on uh -huh. Linden. We live right off, like, right over there. We live in Linden Heights, so. Yeah, a friend got go me some that. stuff from, from them. I'm like, oh, my this, gosh, it's so good. The, the, this, this, this feels like it was made with love. Yes. But, and she so laughed good. at me so hard. I'm like, this is so good. <laughs> I feel like it was made with love. <laughs> that's the secret ingredient. Oh, oh man! So good. Yeah, and and we'll, we'll come in right after the legal okay. ID. We had Top and bottom of the hour, we try to get close to okay. that. Um, it's it's not quite the FCC regulation that no swears, <laughs> but it is it is <laughs> important. Close. It is important. Um, but but uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they, mixed tech oh, that's good too. A couple nights ago, that's good too. I like I, like the little bars that oh, you hey, think Mike. wouldn't. I'm gonna, have I'm gonna let somebody yep, in, okay. so for, forgive sure. me if you yeah. right back. Although, could I trouble you to just hold the door open Absolutely. for me? Absolutely. Thank you. Come on in, guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. As you know, restrooms are just down the hall. Oh, oh that's... Oh. Hi. Good, how are you? Good. I'm enjoying listening to you. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Yeah, Mike has has a, a his single Wapa Kineta comes out today. Oh, awesome! And so, yeah, yeah. given the whole you know nature of its most famous son, right? <laughs> it's like, and I'm curious how many people have already made that connection. Right. <laughs> it's really not hard when you think about it. You know, July twentieth, historic event, <laughs> astronaut. Okay. <laughs> Yeah.
Indeed, you are listening to WUDR, and I am happy to say that it is a full show with great guests who I am so fortunate to have here in the studio. Thanks to Andrew Hunt for being on the show during the second hour. During this hour, we have Madeline Hart from Levitt Pavilion, and we've been talking about the terrific mission. I am a huge supporter of everything that Levitt does, and if you have a chance to go, if you're listening to this broadcast and you're in the area, it is a great evening of music. There is food available. There is merchandise available. And I cannot top Madeline's story about girls who just play and run around in bare feet and become fast friends. I got nothing. I got nothing on that story, Madeline. Could, could you talk a little bit about the music and the schedule for this year? Sure, yeah. So like I said earlier, you know, we try to be really intentional about programming across many different genres. So really any weekend that you look, you'll find something that you love. And then if you don't know that genre, it's free. So come out and try it. it, it you know, that can't hurt anything. So um, this weekend, I'm really excited about Lowdown Brass Band. Mm -hmm. They're out of Chicago. Um, they're jazz, like a Chicago jazz plus hip hop. Um, and just a really fun, upbeat, dancey. We have a dance floor. You're going to want to be on that dance floor. Uh, and then we also have um, local gospel of Tommy McGuffey and True Worship. Tommy McGuffey was on our virtual season last year. And he is his voice, like gospel isn't my favorite genre, but his voice is just incredible mm -hmm. and I, it, it you know like I said even if you don't know if you like a genre come out you're gonna love this <laughs> um, and then so I'm gonna jump all well, okay first oh, please do Reverend Horton Heat is right. next weekend uh, the originator of Psychobilly um, we have we do have a UD night on September 3rd and then um, at the end of towards the end of our season September 18th we have the Ohio players I know right concert <laughs> I, I saw that and my first thought was wait this is in Dayton. <laughs> little, little connection, you know, to the Ohio players. You know, I say as if to make a joke, and everyone's like, well, we know that. But a free, right? Yes. There, was, there was the show at the Rose not too long ago. Well, obviously pre-pandemic right. and, and all of the challenges that that wrought in the music industry. But a great show. I think that's an incredible, that's an incredible opportunity, you know, and quite rightly, the Ohio players are worth every penny you pay for a show. Absolutely. For I, I tell people this all the time. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is not legitimate for me until the Ohio players are in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Absolutely. And totally until agree. that day. <laughs> and I feel like th this feels like I've started a GoFundMe. No, no, seriously. <laughs> I truly believe the Ohio players as an innovator of an important style of music in the United States should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I think there's actually a, it might be on change.org, there's a petition out. Oh, there is, there is, yeah. And and I have shared that link with many people because <laughs> I, I feel passionately about that. But here you can go see them on a beautiful lawn in downtown Dayton for free. Yes, and we are also, like you mentioned, there's food, beverages you can buy. We are also an entertainment district. You can bring in your food, you can bring in your cooler, just no glass. Um, so, you know, it's the cheapest date night that you can possibly have. <laughs> oh, oh, I feel so vindicated right now, Madeline. My wife and I stopped at some local restaurants, got some food, brought it in. And so you can actually use the concert as, as a way not only to, to satisfy any craving you might have, but to support local business. Absolutely, absolutely. But there, you know, we're really, we're in the, what they call the nine. So we're mm -hmm. in like a nine block area that's, up, you know, not up and coming, it's being revitalized. Right. Um, and so we're right a block from the Oregon District. So there are amazing restaurants there. Um, and, but then really all around us, I mean, there's Grist a block away. There's now there's the Fire Blocks District which has, you know, Salt Block, uh, Biscuit Co. I mean, there's so many different places. Third, Third Perk is now on Third Street. Um, there's so many different places you could pick up food and come in and many of them have little um, specials that you know you pick this up on your way to Levitt like Barrel House you can pick up a six pack on your way in and um, they also have a blast blast cooler so you can chill your six pack before you come in it's just, like all these either, oh, all these businesses we're oh, all trying to awful just awful that I know this now <laughs> <laughs> we're all just trying to you know Dayton is about collaboration and so that's what we're trying